I'm Rose Genevieve, and I am with the cast and crew of Bottom Creek. What is your process for bringing the film to life? Well, uh, first we start with the story. And then to, to take the story, you have to take the story and be able to convert it into something that's usable that you can actually build on. So you take the story and you put it into a screenplay or a script. Okay, and the script is your structure for building the film. It says who does what, when, where, how, and then you got to, um, you contact all your people and you get them all together and say, hey, this is the plan, what we want to do. and and, and they follow and you follow a plan. It's it's really task oriented. You set up a set of goals. You set up a set of tasks, and then you uh, have people follow perform each particular task. You find your sets, you, uh, your locations. You set your dates for filming. You get your cast together. Uh, you get your crew together, and then you meet up and uh, make the magic happen. I'll take it. Okay. Now, real quick, while we're there, nice shirt. Hop out. Huh? Nice shirt under the hoodie. Oh yeah. I recognize that font anyway. <laughs> Twenty-nine. That's not good. Shot C take one. This is where you're going to give your sarcastic. Uh, great. Can you see it? Um, I don't have it up right now. I turned it off the same battery. Okay, go ahead and leave it off because what this is actually going to be a close up instead of a wide. Okay. So I'm just I'll just shoot it with is this. Is it the really long grade or is it the grade after his line? Is right after his line. Okay. okay. So when we do it, go ahead and you can give us the grade again. Or uh, we're gonna part A and then you can go right into the grade. Is this just her line Huh? This is just her line. Yeah. Jeff? You up here for sound? All right. Right here. Yep. Okay, so we're rolling. Set. Oh. Yes, um, it's about um, a mother and her two uh, boys. They're basically mentally challenged, and they're going to lose the farm. Uh, their father was killed in a car wreck, and somehow they have to come up with a way to pay off the debt that their father had left them. So they decide that the best way to do that would be to start a dog food business. Unfortunately, the cattle industry and the cattle was at high prices, so to be in competitive, they decide to find another way to uh, get their meat. And I don't really want to go in too much into the film because then I'll give a lot of it away. But it's a real great film. It's gory, and I think everyone will like it. But I'm Chris Boudreaux, and I'll be playing Rick. I'm Derek Sword, and I play Mike. I'm Mel Heflin, and I will be playing Sammy. Benjamin Thompson, I'm playing Kevin. Haley Carver, and I'm playing Marcy. Davey Lance Jr., and I'm playing Eugene Boggs, and also producing. I'm Todd Chamberlain, I'm the director. And I'm Jeff Miner, writer of Bottom Creek. 
What is your process when creating a story? My process when creating stories, um, one of the main things is the storyline. Um, once I get a storyline, I have to find characters for that story. So what I do is really just write a bunch of characters down, their names, and what they have, like, uh, for instance, angry individuals, comical individuals. Um, I come up with uh, characters, and I give them a personality. Uh, Bottom Creek characters are full of personalities. Another thing I need to do is research. What time period does this take, you know, take place in? Because that's very important. When you're doing an independent film, if, say, I do something, write a story on the 18th century, well, costumes and everything else. So basically what I do is stick to modern day or within a certain time period of modern day. So, but most of my stories are within the past 20 years, 30 years. How did you come up with the idea? Well, watching other films, I see how a lot of the characters of today than what they were yesterday are different. They're in a film, they're out of the film. There's not the Freddy Kruegers, there's not the Draculas, there's not any of this. So we wanted to basically put together a group of characters that are memorable. Probably, because what, we're going to go V and yeah, W. December. There's, Here's what's going to happen. Here's what's going to happen, um, uh, Haley. Yeah. You're going to. This is. This is going to be. When we say this, when we when I call it, you're going to be. That's later in the day. I'll drink lots of coffee, and that's when you jump up. Now that sounds like a. Okay. And, and then. And then and then we, back to yeah, me. and that's when you say. Sorry, skipper. Sorry, skipper. I'll be here now. Okay. Got it. And we'll get all of these in right here, and this is going to be a VW. Just remember. Um. <laughs> All right. Same here. Camera. How are we on sound? Are we picking well, up any extra? It's getting the water. That's it. Can't what about that airplane? No, that airplane don't matter. Yeah. Okay. Rolling the camera. Sound on. Sounds on. Rolling. Slate. Bottom creek. Scene thirty. Shot. V W. Uh, take two. And what attracted you to do this project? Well, I've been uh, looking at trying to get into uh, uh, expanding uh, my filmmaking abilities into producing, directing, and stuff like that. And uh, my partner Jeff uh, came up with an idea and said, hey, let's make our own movie. So I'm like, okay, I'll take a look at it. Uh, he's, he's like an imaginary genius, genius with it, and he came up with this whole, whole storyline. 
And uh, so I took a look at it and I said, well, you know what, I think we can, I think we can do this. So I, I did the organization and uh, put it together and said, you know, we can, we can bring this to life. So I um, figured, well, we'll direct it out and see what happens. Well, I pretty much got into it from Jeff and Todd, and uh, as I was putting his writing into screenplay, uh, I kind of fell in love with the character Eugene as far as the style that he brought, so I was like, hmm, that's me. So I asked them if I could play the part, and they're like, yeah, so that's what got me involved. I became involved in the project. Um, Mel Heflin brought me on board, and Todd ended up contacting her and sister-in-law. She was just like, hey, want to shoot a movie? And I said, sure, why not? <laughs> uh, I kind of got involved with it. Uh, I think it was uh, Davey might have hit me up and asked me if I want to do this because I was in a hogma with them beforehand and uh, I kind of needed some more uh, adventure in my life so I was like all right and I came up and kind of went with it. So Todd is absolutely fantastic he gave me a call I do films uh, throughout the area and he contacted me asking if I wanted to do his and I was like heck yeah. Well with me, it goes back to the days they were in Hog Mall. Actually, before that, I was in a film company called Creepy Crawl Entertainment. The guy who started that was Dusty, and he introduced me to Todd. And then, well, I from there, basically, we did a music video for a really good band. And then he asked me, hey, you want to be in a, another movie called Bottom Creek? I'm like, cool, yeah, sure. Uh, well... <laughs> Well, I was at a party last year, and Todd uh, is a mutual friend of mine, another producer in the movie, Corey Coulter, and um, she, I showed up at the party, and he came up to me right away and said, do you want to be in a movie? You look like a perfect Rick, and I said, sure, why not? Figured it would be a good chance to get some film experience. Quiet. Rolling. Rolling. Down. I want that right here. Make sure any chicken Is it out of the camera? Uh, yes. Okay. All right. That's on. Sounds on. Okay. Good. Good enough. Okay. Bottom Creek, shot. Tw scene 29, shot D, take one. Clap. Action. It's beautiful. Do you edit as you go or do you collect all the footage first? That, um, there's two ways to do it. Um, some people collect all the footage and then some people edit as they go. Uh, what I do is I do a partial edit as I go. Uh, as we get the scenes and stuff all finished up, I'll um, do a rough cut. Uh, I'll assemble all of the different scenes and stuff into the shots that I want and I'll do a rough cut and basically clip and paste and put the stuff together so it looks all of the sequences there but then you have all your final editing and I'll wait until I get all the footage for that so that you can make everything look smooth across the whole film instead of cutting from scene to scene. Do you find it easier to do it that way? Yeah, I do. I find it's time saving too <laughs> because once we have time between each shoot, so I'll get this stuff done in between the shoots so that the next time I get a batch of footage, then I can work on that one till we do our next shoot. And then, because if we get to the final shoot, now I've got this whole massive amount of footage to go through. Whereas if I do little cuts and pastes as I go along, then once I get done, then I've got everything essentially already kind of put together. And now all I got to do is fine tune it all. How long do you wait until you start editing after you uh, take the footage? After we take the footage, um, as soon as as soon as I can, you know, it might be it might be the following day, uh, you know, it might be the following week. Um, it all it all depends on what my schedule looks like. Um, I also find that in editing as I go, that gives me a lot of latitude as far as 
say we get into a scene and we get all the footage done, if I go through and I do a quick edit before the next shoot, I'll know if we missed something. That way I can plan my reshoots and my pickup shots before we get to the very end and then we wrap up on all the shooting. Now I'm going through editing and now I've got problems where I've got these gaps. And then I have to try and get hold of everybody, get them all back together, and that can be a nightmare. So if I do it as I as I do it, do it as I go, then I can see where my little gaps are, and I can plan for those before we wrap filming. The obstacles that you've had to deal with when filming an independent film, such as the weather, location, um, actors, uh, basically all of it. You know, the weather uh, on Bottom Creek, the weather has really caused us a lot of problems. It it killed four of our weekends last summer, so that kind of put us behind. Um, as the outdoor scenes are the critical ones uh, when you're trying to uh, get the, the, the weather uh, has to cooperate because if you're trying to achieve a look and Mother Nature's not cooperating, it doesn't quite work, especially if you're filming this scene and you know you're going into a sequential shot, but that's going to be filmed two weeks from now. One weekend it's raining, one weekend it's brightly sunny, and your picture, you're instantly going from rain to sunshine and it doesn't quite work for continuity. So uh, the weather plays a, plays a big role. Um, but I think the even even the bigger, the locations and stuff, that that's not really a big problem. You know, uh, you just talk to the people, you know, the way you want to film and stuff and, and be honest up front and let them know, you know, what you're going to be doing, how you're going to be doing it. And a lot of people are, you know, pretty excited to have somebody there filming a movie. Um, the biggest obstacles that we have found in independent filmmaking is um, organizing schedules. That is that is the toughest. Trying to get the shoots done when you have 20 or 30 different people's schedules that you've got to try and bring together. Because uh, most of the independents, the, the actors and the crew, they're not, it's not paid. It's, it's usually on volunteering, you know, just trying to put the movie together and stuff. So you got 20 different people's jobs that you have to try and work around. You have to try and find that one weekend where everybody's off at the same time. And that proves extremely difficult, especially when you have more, more people working on the film. The more people you work, the more variables you have that's going to interfere with it. Um, if you have like three or four people in the movie, it's a lot easier to get stuff done. But, you know, uh, Bottom Creek, we have quite, you know pretty extensive cast and crew. I think we have, what, 35 people or more working on the film. So that's a, that's a that's a that's a lot of people on an independent film, and it's a lot of people uh, a lot of people's jobs and schedules to try and get together, and and I think that's probably our most uh, our most uh, demanding obstacle, and because of that, it extends the ta amount of time to make the film. So because what we couldn't get done in the fall because we need certain seasons. For the uh, for the outdoor shots too, so we have to wait to spring till we get that same season setting back uh, to continue filming. Um, and when you go over a time period where you're not doing anything or you know doing little, uh, you you lose you can lose people. You know, uh, people have lives, and you know sometimes they move on, and then. Now you've got footage with that person that you need to try and recapture with another actress or actor or something like that. So the I, I, the, the people schedules in, in, uh, is the biggest hurdle. Now I remember when I was doing a film, saying that it was really cold outside, but the film was actually taking place in spring. So they had a whole bunch of fake flowers in front of the house. Sure. Sure, if you've got the money. <laughs> you know, a lot of independent films, they're really, uh, you know, constricted on what they can do because of money. Um, uh, money is a, a tough thing to come by, um, uh, unless you're independently wealthy, which I don't think very many of us are. Um, but, you know, with money, you can build any kind of set you want. You can take an inside of a warehouse and make it look like a, a crick running down the middle of a farmer's field, uh, if you've got the money. But if you don't have the money, then we have to rely on Mother Nature. True. All right, and thank you very much. Sure. Thanks for having us. You're welcome. Appreciate it.
find your inspiration? Um, that's a good question. Me and my friend, well, Todd, the director, uh, we've known each other for a long time. And we actually used to use the old wind-up 8 millimeter movie cameras. And we would do movies then. Unfortunately, when you did them back then, you got like two minutes of film on one wide, you know, one roll. And we were always into making movies. It was just one of them things we always wanted to do. And then we went into the military. Um, Todd went into college and I did my thing. And then when he got out of the college and out of the Navy, we decided to, we got together again and decided to make movies. So, yeah. So are you a pen and ink guy or do you do software? Pen and ink. Um, pen and ink. Um, I don't do any typing. I'm not a very good typer. Uh, everything is written down by hand. And then Todd has to uh, decipher everything. And But that's how I do everything. I write everything down. I don't type anything. Um, the only time I use the computer is for research. Uh, for time periods, dress, because when, like I said, when we're doing a script, I like to keep everything within, like, if you're doing, say, 1980s, the film takes place in the 80s, the dress is important, the cars are important, everything like that, and that's the only time I use the computer. Other than that, everything's written down by hand. Okay, let's try this. You're not, okay, Are you ready? Okay, it's uh, <clears throat> Quiet, let's say it. Rolling. Rolling. Uh, just a touch. There, there, there we go. Okay. All right. Okay. Now you're getting them. Okay. All right. Sound. Sound. Yeah. Slate. Action. Be tell us of a favorite moment involving the film. Uh, I guess the favorite moment would be watching Davy tow a kayak up a creek in 40 degree weather. Uh, especially, well, I had to do it too, but uh, it was <laughs> numbing. But I'd have to say it was a favorite part, watching him suffer. I think probably my one of my favorite parts, one of my favorite parts of the movie was um, not really coming from the the film, but actually before we started filming, uh, we had a um, uh, a table read and um, a, uh, um, a, a like a little workshop, an actor's workshop. Uh, a good friend of ours, uh, Gus Zucco, who's also a very talented actor. Uh, hosted that workshop for us and uh, some of the uh, exercises that he ran us through were just really enlightening and, and uh, 
really amazing. So if if he ever if he does another workshop and you ever get a chance, man, you check it out because that was probably one of my favorite times. Well, I gotta say, my favorite time was uh, throwing my ex-wife around in a freaking stall in a barn. But, but you'll see that in the movie. But uh, <laughs> no, pretty much in general, just having the cast around, like on set and everything, it's it's always a fun time. So I mean. <laughs> Every day is something different, so. One of my favorite scenes was the day the four uh, kids cast members got to play with kayaks and some of us were a little more hilarious than others <laughs> in maneuvering them and um, poor Rick <laughs> ended up having a plastic children's kayak paddle. <laughs> it, was <a> toy. <laughs> it was a toy paddle. <laughs> it was really quite hilarious to watch him try to figure out how to use that. <laughs> Uh, my favorite thing is also the kayak thing, to tell you the truth, because I never kayaked a day in my life. So trying to go out there and, yeah, trying to go out there and kayak, I am kind of definitely look like a duck out of water, man. I had no idea what I was doing. My favorite day or thing that we did was when we made s'mores and there were horsies and the horsey wanted a marshmallow. It made me really happy. Did you give him a horse a marshmallow? Of course. <laughs> Okay, well, today's my first day on filming, but uh, my favorite moment is, well, any moment I get to drive a car because I love driving cars. <laughs> yeah, I'm Rick. I get to use the kids' paddle. It's not very fun. Uh, I guess my favorite moment's a little nerdy, but I found a cool mushroom, and the next morning it had completely transformed into a different-looking mushroom, which was cool. 